you to the book of Acts. I just want you and I to consider something from the book of Acts. For the Lord has a word for his daughter, for his son today, from the book of Acts. So we are in the book of Acts. We are considering Acts chapter 12, verses 1 through 19. That's a lengthy passage. But due to time, or, uh, just for now, allow me to just read one verse for our sermonic concentration. But you'll discover as we go on that we are going to probably cover the entire pericope. That is from verse 1 all the way to verse 19, gradually, if time allows, and as God himself wills. And so we are reading Acts chapter 12, verse 5. The Bible says, Peter was therefore kept in prison, but constant prayer was offered to God for him by the church. Shall we seek the Lord in prayer? Gracious, merciful, loving Heavenly Father, it's your moment to speak to these, your beloved sons and daughters, for whom Jesus Christ, you died. Lord, may you speak words of life to us today. Remind us, Father, of the importance of prayer in as far as we are concerned as a church. May you bless us. May you water these, your precious children. But, Father, as you do so through me as a vessel, may I be watered. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. We are discussing together this morning under the subject when the church prays. In your chonga ni no cha pepa. When the church prays, you see, child of God, God always answers prayers. Not sometimes, but always answers prayers. If you are not given that for which you have prayed, it does not mean God has not answered. His answer is probably against your will, but his will is always right. So meaning God always answers prayers. In fact, he promised in the scripture to answer his children who prays to him. Jeremiah chapter 53 verse 3, what does he say? He promises to say, go upon me and I shall answer you and show you great and marvelous things that you do not know. And so calling on the name of God is what the first century Christian church did. That's what they did. So despite the challenging period in which they were living, the church prayed. Now by challenging, what do we mean? They were living at a time when especially being a small group, which they used to call the sect of the, 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 the way, the sect of the way, so they, were, they used to be considered as heretics. They were hated by the Jews. Imagine, they were hated by the Jews. It was because of this reason that you know, we, we are taken to the account of Acts chapter 12. Because of the hatred that was there for the Christians, we are taught to say the great leader, the first leader, if you will, of the Christian church by the name of James was killed. He was killed as a witness, as a faith witness. So you see, child of God, despite this challenging period, we've discovered to say the church of God exercised care, exercised love, exercised empathy and sympathy for each other. No wonder verse 5 tells us that while Peter was kept in prison, the church outside watched soccer. Is that what the Bible says? No, maybe my version is wrong. While Peter was kept in prison, the church outside watched the Mpali. Is that what the Bible says? No, no, no maybe mine is still wrong. While Peter was kept in prison, the church outside discussed politics. Is that what the Bible says? Mm -mm. Your Bible and my Bible says, while Peter was kept in prison, the church prayed for him. You see, child of God, there is power in your prayer. During this time, the church was vexed with persecution. They were so tormented to, to an extent that, like I said, James was killed. Now, we need to be uh, to make something straight here. The James that is being talked about here, it is not James, the son of Alphaeus. It is James, the son of Zebedee. Because among the twelve, there were how many two Jameses? Is that, that, that kind of English? 
James says, Sungwecho. Eh? All right. Kwa liba James Banga, mwabili, because he's sitting in Mungeresh. So now, kwa liba James, mwabili, awa kwa liba James, umwa na wakwa Zebedi. The son of Zebedi, whose brother was John. But there was another James, the son of affairs. Now, this one who was killed was James, the son of Zebedee, who was the leader, the first leader, uh, for argument's sake, we can say, was the first general conference president, you know, at that time. But of course, there was no general conference. But we can say he was the first leader. So he was killed. So we see, child of God, what we find is that when you choose to work for God, when you choose to, to, to go on the journey with Jesus Christ, child of God, expect persecution. If you have truly decided to be a disciple of Jesus Christ, a true one, not a superficial one, you will be persecuted. We see that happening in the early Christian church. So James, I mean the Christians were persecuted, James was crucified. But we are going to say soon after, you know, I mean before the coming of Jesus Christ, before, soon before the coming of Jesus Christ, by coming I mean the second advent of Jesus Christ, you will be persecuted. You will be persecuted. We as a church will be persecuted. In fact, because we are kind of like the minority, people are going to call us names, all sorts of names. These people that see themselves to be worshipping the true God, they are the ones responsible for the global warming. Away with them, arrest them, throw them in prison, chop off their heads, and a lot of things are going to happen to you and I because you have decided to follow Jesus Christ, especially because as a remnant. However, we have nothing to fear for the future. No. Except as we shall forget how the Lord has done what? Has led us in the past. You see, child of God, this church was founded by the rock himself, who is Jesus Christ. And so, it's, it being the one upon which the church was founded, he knows how he will propel this church. He knows how he will lead this church until the very time when he shall return. So, child of God, let us not fear. We ought to stand up when everyone is sitting down. When everyone is bowing down to idols, you stand up as a true child of God. So, child of God, you see that Herod persecutes the church as a tetrarch at that time, as a king, as he was called at that time. He persecutes the church. Now, when you hear the word Herod, who is Herod? Now, there are three Herods that are mentioned in the Bible. The first Herod is called Herod the Great. This is the one who almost, thank God for prophecy, you know, Jesus Christ was almost killed by Herod the Great. But according to prophecy, it would have defied everything. It was Jesus was not going to die at the hand of Herod. No, no. So he almost killed Jesus. And he ended up slaughtering all the children, the children, the boys, the male children at that time. That was Herod the Great. But we are told to say there was a second Herod who was Herod Antipas. The one who was behind the beheading of John, the baptizer or the baptist. But after John Antipas, I mean, sorry, Herod Antipas, there was another Herod, the third one, also arrested Peter and threw him in the prison. And as far as they were concerned, that was the end. And little did they know what they had just done. You do not, child of God, pick a fight with a child of God and expect to go scot free. You don't do that. You don't do that. They are just waged war against God, not against Peter, not against the church. So when you see child of God, when you are fighting a child of God, when you are being fought by, by enemies of progress out there, they are not really as fighting you, but they are fighting one who has called you, and that is your God. So when Peter was put in prison, as they were celebrating, because at that time there was a feast of unleavened bread which normally would take about seven days. So instead of now killing Peter like he had killed James, the Bible tells us that he was put in prison and waiting you know, for the, for the feast to end. That's when you bring him out and kill him. So in the Roman prison, the Bible tells us something interesting here. When he was thrown in prison, Verse 4 of Acts chapter 12. Just follow me closely, verse by verse. And when he had apprehended Peter, he put him in prison and delivered him to four uh, quaternions of soldiers. Now, other versions would say four squads of soldiers. And then uh, to keep him, intending that after Easter or after the Feast of Unleavened Bread, to bring, to bring him forth to the 
people. So that was the intention that Peter be put in prison and then after the one week is over, he should be brought out to the people and they tried and eventually beheaded or executed like they had done to James. But verse 5 comes in. Peter therefore was kept in prison with all the intentions that the evil one has through Herod and the Jews wanting to kill him. The Bible says in verse 5 that while Peter was in prison, while Peter was kept in prison, but the church prayed. Ah, uh, we're away together today. But the church prayed. There are some lessons that God wants you and I to learn today. The first lesson that we are learning is that when you are used by the Holy Spirit, you always become a threat to Satan and his agents. When you are being used by the Holy Spirit, you always become a threat to Satan and his angels or his agents. This is what happened. Peter was put in prison. I mean, he's, he's just an, a helpless old man at this time, obviously, or as it were. But now he's put in prison, and the Bible says that he was put in prison with two guards guarding him and, you know, fastened in the chains on both his hands. Now, there is a word here that the Bible uses, you know, which is the quaternions, if you are using the King James Version. But if you are using the King James Version, it's four squads. Why four squads keeping one helpless man who was not even a soldier but a fisherman? How do you keep a fisherman in his chains but you think that's not enough? You put, you know, four squads. Now, by four squads, four squads or quaternions, we are talking about four by four. There were 16 guards assigned to guard one person. Just one individual. So, but why guarding this one fisherman, helpless man, by four guards? Why? What is going on? Why? Mr. Child of God, Herod himself was no stranger to what was going on around. Herod must have heard how big the God of Peter was. He must have heard that. He did not belittle Peter. He must have heard how the Holy Spirit through Peter managed to heal the paralytic. Herod must have heard how God through Peter was able to resurrect the dead, Acts chapter 9. When Tabitha was resurrected, Herod must have heard how God through you know, through Peter was able to do what he was able to heal many people just by a shadow. Just by a shadow. Acts chapter 5, verse 18 through 20. He must have heard how you know he was able to do exploits. He must have heard how he did a lot of things for God. Just a simple Peter to him. But he must have heard all these things. In fact, by the way, he must have heard the account of how. He accomplished one of the most cleanest prison break ever on record, at, at least up to that time. Acts chapter 5. When he, alongside John, were able to escape the prison without anyone noticing. He must have heard to say, no, 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 I hate how this man escaped from prison. So you must keep him secured under four gods. Child of God. Despite all these things that happened, we discovered to say the church kept praying outside. So we were learning that child of God, when you choose to work for God, you have enemies. And you'll be incarcerated. You'll be put in a certain prison. But lesson number two is that when the church prays, when the church prays, a church member finds the freedom and the peace amidst incarceration. This is child of God. When the church prays, one of us in here, when we pray for a certain member, that member will find the freedom, will find the peace, despite them being incarcerated. Verse 5, the Bible says, Peter was therefore kept in prison, but the church prayed. The church prayed. No, 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 no. Read slowly but surely. Peter was kept in prison, but the church prayed for him. Now the word but is child of God is what they call the adversive conjunction. This adversive 
conjunction is trying to tell you and I, Chapel Court, that there's something that you must shift to, something new, something good, against that which has already been spoken. Despite the bad situation in which Peter was, something good was happening. Ah, you're not with me, church. Despite your situation, somebody out there is praying for you. So while Peter was there in, in prison, the church prayed for him. And, and I love what the Bible says. In the King James Bible, it says, but the church kept constant prayer for him. Now, do not miss any word. The word constant simply means unceasing. The word constant means, you know, fervent. The word constant, child of, child of God, means that these people were so dedicated. In fact, others have suggested that these people had stopped eating. These people, in short, they were fasting just so Peter could be released. Because they remember what had happened to James. So they knew that for Peter, the situation is hopeless. Just like James died, he's dying too. Because he wrote, In fact, they were in hiding themselves when they were praying. They were not at a church center like this. They were in a house of Mary, the mother of John, John Mark. That's where they were. And so they were in hiding, even as they were praying. They want God to do something about the situation. So the Bible says that while Peter was in prison, the church of God constantly prayed for him. Listen, child of God. We ought to pray for one another. Pray for me as I pray for you. In fact, united prayer works. We ought to pray for one another, especially in these turbulent times. The Bible says because when the church prays, child of God, when the church was praying for Peter, unceasingly, something started happening. And you uh, notice what is happening. It was the same night, the Bible says that, it was the same night when the following morning, Peter would be released to the people and be executed. Now read your Bible again. It was the same night when he would be released to the people and be crucified. I mean, be, be beheaded. But thank God that the people constantly prayed for Peter. It's not that they just prayed once and then off they went to sleep. No, no, no. Child of God, the people prayed for Peter. Now, I love what is going on here. Because, child of God, when the church is praying for you, when the church is praying for you, you can find the freedom and the peace amidst the challenge that you are going through. I'll say it this way. Listen to what is happening here. The Bible is saying, in verse 6, in, in, in verse 6, the Bible is saying, and when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers. Maybe, maybe I'm having a wrong vision. Tomorrow they are going to kill him, uh, but he's sleeping. Uh, no, no, I, I don't think there are people here who have ever been on death row. None of us. But child of God, you know that this is my last night. And then tomorrow I'm dead. Here in Zambia, thank God, there's no death sentence anymore. All right? They will give you what they call pre life imprisonment. But there are countries like in the U.S. where they either give you lethal injection or, you know, electric chair. You know, where, where, where you have to be injected, not with, you know, panado or, or, or caffeine, but with a certain, you know, substance that will kill you in minutes while your, your, your relatives are watching how you are dying, Lord. If not that, they'll put you on a chair whereby they have to just switch on, flip the switch, and that's it, you are gone. Now, imagine it's the night before that happens. Now, what is interesting, according to my version, I think it's a... It's a correct version, then, I, I believe. The Bible says, Peter was sleeping. Child of God, when the doctor has just pronounced that you have stage 4 cancer, most of us will have sleepless nights. It is at that moment when you are in trouble, you know that this is it, this is the end of the rope, that you ought to find the peace and the freedom in Christ. Now, that doesn't just happen accidentally. It only happens when you have a relationship with your God. You know who is behind you. And
and you know that your brothers and sisters, the church, that are praying for me. And so, child of God, he found time to sleep and uh, allow me to, to, to go a little bit deeper here. The Bible says Peter was sleeping between soldiers. Now, when you say he was sleeping, it sounds as if it was just an, an act of sleep. That's it. It ends there. No, no, no. Here's what is going on. The, uh, the morphology of the word, trying to break the word down, was sleeping. Those words is what is called the perfect indicative active, meaning Peter continued to sleep. Ah, I'll say that again. It means Peter kept on sleeping. Ah, I'll say that again. Even when the guard said, hey, hey, now show what you left. Peter continued sleeping. Now, that is another kind of faith that God is looking for, for his children today, or in his children today. He kept on sleeping between two soldiers. I mean, he has chains in his hands. There's a soldier here, there's a soldier here, and there are guards outside. But the brother man is if, I mean, for argument's sake, you say, the mink will not do much. He's even snoring comfortably. The only other time I find a child of God, despite the danger surrounding him, sleeping is Daniel in the den of lions. I mean, he's just there in the lions, he's sleeping, even though there's danger everywhere, but he knows who is with him in that danger. You see, my brother, my sister, you will find yourself in trouble one day. Trouble that not, not even your family members can help you out of. You will find yourself in challenges, in situations that are unbearable. But the only one who will keep you sane and in your right mind is, is Jesus Christ, knowing that he's present with you. And he does not abandon his own. Ellen G. White says in the book Acts, uh, uh, Acts of the Apostles, page 145, she says, While upon various pretexts, the execution of Peter was being delayed until after the Passover, the members of the church had time for deep searching of heart and earnest prayer. I'll pause there for now. While Peter knew that this is my last night, the church searched their hearts and fasted for their brother. How many of us do that? When you know that my brother, my, my sister and the church is going through a lot of problems, how many of us take time to fast in our homes for that brother? Most of us, we simply say, no, 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 it's each one for himself and God for us all. But here we learn that even though Peter was in prison, the church, according to the spiritual prophets, searched their hearts and fasted for the brother. 